When I woke up this morning, you should have seen what I had in the bed with me. He jumped up out of the bed, pulled his hair down his eyes. Looked at me like a nine cannon that come out of me. He hit six. He was like a, well, he was a one-man band, and he was really a one-man punk band, if you ask me. He was a wild man from Van. It's been said before, but he'd out-fight, out-fuck, out-drink, and out-sing the majority of musicians, man. He did it his own way. He's the king of psychobilly. Rockabilly's too boring for Hassel. Hassel Atkins makes uh, G. Jallon look like Merv Griffin. He seemed to subsist on the road uh, on, uh, on an occasional hefty meal of pork chops or chicken or raw hamburger. He ate, a, he ate raw hamburger. Uh, he got nobody. He got nobody. He got nobody to call my own. I got to meet Chuck Berry and we got to meet Lil Rich. He was, I got to see his show and then I had to go put on the show. I think he was the king of rock and roll. He's like everything that's like rock and roll. This guy in a trailer making rock and roll. We had to drive to Lexington to pick up a spare key for his car and leave Hassel at my house with my 14-year-old daughter. And my now ex-wife about had a nervous breakdown. I don't know what more I can say. When you hear the, the lyrics and when you see his life and the hunching bus and where he lived and no telephone, and I mean all of it is part of you know the legend, the cult and all that stuff. That's easy to have a cult around somebody like Hassel. Living there in a trailer with a couple girls and he had some special plants growing out there on the mountain, and he had some squirrels sitting there and in a pot, and uh, telling me all kinds of stories about how his sisters would fight over that head, suck them brains out. I, you know, you can all think he's this cute guy from West Virginia, but he's a guy who'd been in lots of shootouts. No other motherfucker was talking about cutting off heads and putting them on their wall back in the 50s. And that's way more punk rock than, you know, anything. We, uh, we had the opportunity to hire Gigi Allen. And so Gigi Allen actually opened up for Hassel Atkins. <laughs> and man, that was a crazy show. Dio had the cramps not heard Hassel Atkins. But they have known how to be the crane. He scared people sometimes. He really did. <laughs> He, the only reason he hadn't killed anyone was by the grace of God, by accidentally being too drunk to actually hit them with his gun. Then Hazel showed up with his balls of water and, uh, and played, and he did a show that was, uh, it was like a history of rock and roll. That's the hunching bus. Do you remember the first time you went to see a Hassel show? Yeah, yeah, I was six. You were six? I was six years old. Do you remember where it was? Yeah, it was over the big house. He promised me a pony if I'd go with him. I didn't get no pony. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, especially if you're gonna understand the lyrics like you know I'm gonna cut your head off so you can't eat no more hot dogs now, honey, don't you be afraid I'll talk to you will cut your head off about a half day we have arrived arrived at Hassel Atkins Yeah. Well, that's it. I called to her, she looks just like you. Sir. You ain't gonna believe me, listen to it. Watch him now. <laughs> yeah, I thought you liked it. I said, yeah. I worked all day for 50 cents an hour. $4 a day. I played music all night for nothing. For years. <laughs> And then I got to a dollar a night, and then two dollars a night. And it took me a long time to get up twelve dollars a night. That's four or five, six hours sometimes all night long. Then I finally got up for forty dollars. Long road, I tell you, to hope. Uh, he, he heard Elvis on the radio, and, and he thought Elvis Presley was making all that noise by himself, so that's how he ended up becoming a one man band. He about did that. He about made all that noise. He was just, I don't know what else to say, his rhythm, man. I loved Hazel's rhythm. And I think Hazel knew he had his own rhythm. No, it was, it was, uh, it was unique. It was ironic. It was challenging sometimes. My goodness, this is something. What is this? What do you think about booze? I like it all right. You know, I, I drink a little bit, you know. I mean, what you say, Booze, the president, what do you think about him? Oh. Midway into the show, threw his guitar up in the air, which he kind of often did, but it went out instead of up, hit a kid in the head, blood started squirting out, stopped the show. Turns out I think it was a writer for spin, from what, from what I understand. A well-placed shot. Down in my working shoes, I can feel the Boone County Blues coming on strong. And then in come a bunch of the whites. That would be Jesco White, Mamie White. I followed him to every bar in this town. As Hank, you says, I've been kicked around, I've been kicked out of every damn bar in this old town. All because of hassle. It was a prime place to see him play because it was just in a satellite repair shop with a little tent in the backyard in the middle of nowhere, man, with a bunch of hillbillies. You know, in Hazel, I think, in his travels and in his gigs and records, uh, was kind of a mythic sort of figure, you know, and, and sometimes life is never that easy for a myth. Undoubtedly the world's greatest one man band. Oh, baby, I want you here. Come on, hold me. I want you here. I want you here. 